guys, welcome to my channel. First of all, I wish all of you a happy new year. I hope you are healthy and you were able to spend some good times with family despite the current condition with the COVID situation. So yeah, coming back to the battle report, uh, as you know, probably noticed, I didn't do this time a matchup analysis. There is a simple reason for that. Between the game two and three, we had the update in points. And since me and my opponent, we were pretty low in the table of the tournament, we decided that we would allow ourselves to play with the new version and update and change a little bit the list just to try some new things and I mean there was no big influence on the tournament and uh, so yeah that was the idea that's why I didn't do a big analysis because basically yeah it's a new list and it's something a bit different so I will do again some new matchup analysis in the upcoming tournaments don't worry about that so this video will be structured as the following first of all I will do a short analysis of the list I played on the game one and two and then I will explain what is my new list and what was basically the thought process to moving from the list two to uh, in the in the first list to the second list that's a little bit the idea and then we will go into the battle report so that was the list i played in the game one and two against demon legion and uh, dread elves old book S still the old book so yeah i'm decided i tried to yeah distinguish a little bit the unit the uses what i liked what i liked what i didn't like and why I think a lot of it, this list is influenced by the presence of the Great Bull of Shamut. I really love the model, um, what I can do with it, obviously it's very expensive and I'm pretty convinced now that if I play the Great Bull of Shamut, I wouldn't like to have the Lama Suscola and the Kadim Titan in the same list. Basically because Lama Suscola, it's both models that cannot be hidden behind anything else that that a, a gigantic model which is problematic because i have only often of the only one in the list it's quite difficult to hide and i would like to reduce a little bit my sensitivity to war machines so i think that's an issue that's why i think they cannot fit together in the same list in my point of view if, if you obviously if you want to have uh, it's my purpose to have a list that can play a little bit against and anybody uh, obviously if you are able to select a little bit who you are facing with a pairing process in a team tournament probably my thought process would be a bit different but in this case i would drop the lama suscola despite him being very good value for the price i think for 330 he's able to fight we saw some very good uh, action from the lama suscola in my battle re report when i played him i think you can take some risk with this model because it's not that expensive and he's pretty decent in combat with the breast weapon so i was really happy with the lama suscola but i think he couldn't fit anymore with the list with the great boot of shamut and obviously i want to play this guy because i have a great model for it i love playing this this model so uh, also a newbie, so definitely I will I will keep him in the list. So Lama Suscola is out. The BSB, I think this build is shit. Uh, only a one up. Uh, I was in a bad situation against Evo snipes. I was in a bad situation against Dread Elves combat abilities. I think he's scared of too many things with this build. So what I would take instead of Seat of Authority, Alchemist Alloy, I would probably take Great Weapon and then Destiny's Call. I think it's 30 point more expensive but definitely much better defensively speaking you can fight some stuff you're not so scared so i think if you play vizy on foot that should be a better build or maybe go one up five up if you play especially if you play in the immortal with the zalaman tekash banner i think one up five up is really good because then you can play on the fact that it's ap0 on special attacks um 34 ziggurat regular i don't think it fits my play style and how i like to play so i would definitely decrease the number of bodies into this unit because yeah i didn't feel that comfortable with this big boss and basically you are sometimes trying to escape because you are not that great in combat you're good but still you are you need to be careful against some targets and you still uh, i mean you're not fearless so your steadfast check will be on eight rollable which is problematic for an expensive bus so i'm not convinced that i will keep this unit uh, vassal levies slaves and so on i think they are they are great 
great value for points at the moment so I couldn't do without them um, to be honest I think the slaves now with the new version of the command being cheaper I think they will suffer in comparison with the vassal levies to be honest I think vassal just o offer more because they have access to standard and stuff which is uh, even chieftain which is helpful so I think we might see a bit less slaves and a bit more vassal but it was already the case actually I think most of the ID player just put more vassal in the list than slaves anointed very happy about the unit of the anointed um, I'm, I, I like I think the anointed fits really well how I like to play I put them in my list many many times in the, with the old book with the new book with the old old book in the old times as well so I played them a lot I really love the model because they can charge far and that's something I really like because it allows you to be much more active so I think it fits much more how I like to play than maybe Immortal, Luga, all that stuff that might be is definitely cheaper uh, might be able to fit more bodies and be really good in combat as well um, for for the same price I mean you can have a huge boss you can definitely have uh, one solid unit of Immortal plus another chariot so you can have a lot for 700 points so definitely they are they are pretty expensive but I'm, I'm really happy about what I can do with these units uh, like they are solid with Res Resilience 5 the chaff um, I'm not convinced by the Vassal Cavalry. Ob obviously, it's almost an auto include, but I think you will see with my new list. I think I could be able to play without. Gunry team, um, they are good point for for good value for point, I guess, because they are not that expensive, but they just don't fit or like to play. They just encourage me to play a bit more behind to try to profit from the shooting, but then you don't hit, and basically your plan is just. Yeah, based on two war machine hitting on five up, which is not that likely. They are good. Don't get me wrong. They are, they are good. They are good. Definitely for 300 points. I mean, you get a lot for for this amount of points. You still get a very good center uh, hit with a strength seven, AP four, D3 wound. It's really good. And then the strength three is not bad as well. So I think they are good. They are good. They can move. They can shoot. So our target. They are. They are good. Don't get me wrong, but I just think they don't fit the, the play style I want to, to have. And the Academy Titan, I spoke about it. I think for me, it's either one of those. I wouldn't probably wouldn't build the list without one of these two guys because I really love both what they can offer, but they are just too similar. They have the simil similar weaknesses, uh, meaning divination, uh, low strength, uh, spam, for example, magic or shooting is problematic for both, um, and they are they have the the same strengths as well and and weakness. So flaming attack is uh, could be an issue against ward save. So yeah, and they have the regarding strengths, it's the same strength, strength six. They have lateral movement, which is very good. So they are too similar to be together in the list, probably at least in in the way I want to build my list. Meaning also for not only for team tournament because yeah. As always in team tournament, you can just say, "Okay, I will avoid divination. I will avoid ward save against fire, and then I'm good." It's it's feasible, obviously. My new list. So I decided to keep the um, the Great Bull of Shamut. I gave him the magical heirloom to gain one spell, and the guy adept uh, took the SS of Free Mind. So I moved back with something that I already played more or less. So basically, Toy Commissioner with 2 up, 5 up, Touch of Greatness, Spell Weapon. I like the idea of having something against parry, which is good against parry, because I think the ID might suffer a little bit against parry. We don't have that much paired weapon uh, in the usual list, so I think that might be helpful to just get this extra attack. Um, and the defense is okay. I mean, it's not the best you can have. Obviously, you can have 1 up, 4 up with 4 attack strength 6, six so you can say to me, yeah, Damage output is somehow similar, just one attack less and one weapon skill and not breaking the parry, but you get a much better defense. And I would agree with that, but I guess it's just slightly more expensive on one, one, one hand. And then also, I like to have slightly better damage output with him. I think it is helpful. And then I put back the Prophet Adept on the Kadim Chariot. Uh, like the model, I think he's good. And I decided to give him... So the Binding Control is not anymore on the General. It's on him. And I gave him the essence, essence of Free Mind. Basically, what I wanted is to be able to choose... Am I, am I going to, to face... To, to play 
a very fighty game where there will be a lot of combat and then I will most likely select alchemy or is it going to be more range damage affair where I really need the pyro to put the extra damage because I cannot face some unit and in this case I think it fits really well with the occulty ma master because either you can go pentagram of pain, a toxic breath Fireball and 2d6 for example, or you can choose also the salvo, but you can have 4 damage that are not too hard to cast and that do some um, low strength damage, but a lot of damage, or you can go more against good armor with Toxic Breath, uh, Grave Call, Mark for Doom, and then Alchemy you still have access to Silver Spike and Quicksilver Lash, so I think the, yeah, it's really oriented to have a lot of damage that are good against any kind of target, any kind of list. And I like that really, really much. And at the same time, I'm decent with the buff because I still have access to the ward save, to the plus two armor, to the hereditary. So I think I have some good option. And with my list playing anointed with defensive five, I think the hereditary is almost auto include because when you can reduce the defense offensive to one, then basically it's, it's a huge help for the anointed in combat. So I think I really need the heirloom and I also wanted the heirloom because when I choose pyro I can still use the heirloom to give flammable token, get reroll to wound with pyro. So I think that was really good. Obviously this guy is a bit more expensive than usually but he's providing some, some very good uh, tools. Yeah, it's a toolbox actually, you can really uh, design him as, as you like for the, for the game. And then my core is basically two small units of ziggurat, good value for point. 355 you get full command great weapon it's pretty decent it moves well uh, independent leadership so i love them and then two units of vassal levies with relentless company basically the idea is to be not so more much more expensive than the vassal cav but in core scoring much more bodies a more possibility to give flammable token because basically you can chaff and then if, if you have one, at least one guy able to hit the opponent you are giving him a flammable token which is good so I think it's really nice and I also like the fact that it can start from the starting line of your battle line. Basically you can really be on the on the starting line and then chaff 15, which is often better than the light calf that need to be hidden behind something and then move around. So obviously you have less flexibility with them to chaff. I agree with that because it's infantry, they don't move that well. I mean it's an infantry block so you have some limitation in the movement and what you can do and in some situation it can be very annoying because you couldn't be able to chaff because of some unit blocking or train or I don't know what. But obviously yeah, in some cases they are worse than the light calf. I agree with that but I think with the type of list I'm playing I can I can live with that because I'm playing anointed with commissioner that are bodyguard and I have an unbreakable chariot. So. I have some pieces that can still take the charge, take a charge from an opponent and that's why I think I can live with that kind of solution for the chaff. Uh, double anointed, didn't move that well, just remove one model to, to put the commissioner in and then I was able instead of the chaff to put a Kalim Chariot, which is also nice because then I can put both Kalim Chariot together to split the damage sometimes. And to finish the list, Infernal Giant, I think I need a big base to hide the Great Bull of Shamut, so that's why I'm putting him. I decided to go for Nafta Trorer on Kadim Blast because it's still helpful. Sometimes you're just facing uh, things like Seekers or even Sea Guard with the shooting are annoying for the Great Bull. A lot of stuff that are annoying, I think I might have a use for Nafta Trorer and it's not that expensive. And you can rely on because it's a two up and I really like the fact that I mean, you are almost auto eating, and that for me is very important. Uh, rather that than something that eats on a five up or even four up. I mean, here you don't shoot that often because it's range 18, so you might get maybe one or two nice shots. But at the same time, you know you can really rely on it, and you can play with Cadim Bless. It's flaming, so you can play with token that you can give. And I like the steel juggernaut, obviously, for the big base to have more space to cover for the Great Bull and at the same time be a bit better in combat. So what I like the most maybe about this list is everything can fight. And that was really important for me. Obviously, some pieces are versatile and you pay some price for it. For example, he's a master, so that's why you pay so much. This guy is a mage as well. So there are some, some pieces that are pretty important and expensive, but they are playing multiple roles within the list. And I think that's something I like really, really much. 
And that's the list for my opponent. So basically, for this game, he decided to go with Double Master, Tome, Witchcraft, a Tyrant with a 1 up, uh, MR2, BSB MR2, Double Machinist, uh, 2 block in core, Double Brotherhood, Double Plague Disciples, Double Gutter Blade as Chaff, a Mid Grinder that can go in one of the block, and Double Dread Mill, which is uh, almost an auto include as a Vermin Swamp player. A bit surprised maybe by the core setup because I think more often Vermin Swap player decide between Rattat Arms or Vermin Guard and then put a big block with everything in it, double machinist, mid grinder, all the character and stuff, and then you can get a very solid brick with a lot of static res. In this case, going to brick, I think it makes less sense. Um, and also, I don't like that much the Plague Disip Disciples without the Vermin Demon. I think this unit is mostly good with Vermin Demon because you can profit from the leadership, but without the leadership, it might be difficult to maneuver with the Frenzy, basically. We played uh, Dawn Assault Breakthrough. Here you have the spell selection. Play pause if you want to look at it. I decided to go Pyro, obviously, to deal with the Plague Disciples that are a huge threat in this game that can do a lot of damage. So if I, if I can kill them before combat, I would be really happy. And I think I didn't have so much use for Alchemy in this game. Obviously, there will be some, com some combat, but I think I need to do some damage before the combat. A matchup analysis. So obviously we're playing Breakthrough, if you analyze his list, he has only four big block of, uh, yeah, two big, two, uh, two 20 man infantry scoring unit that are pretty slow, and I can use Frenzy to magnets of the, some of the scoring. So I'm feeling pretty confident about the Breakthrough. Obviously Don Assault gives you the opportunity to, pot, to put some unit on one side and then have a free corridor with, with nothing facing you, but at the same time you need to wheel to go into the zone to break through. So yeah, it's, it's key to defend this corner properly to avoid that going around. But uh, yeah, at, at the same time, I think we like to put some weak, sometimes some weak scoring in this zone to be able to then go into the breakthrough, breakthrough zone. Uh, his death star, if he puts every, all eggs into the same basket, I think it should struggle against my anointed star. Especially if I don't take too much casualties before the game, before the, the combat. I think for me that's, that's the, the key aspect of this game. If the anointed cannot lose too many bodies before combat, I should be fine because he doesn't have the punch to really kill the anointed except maybe the, um, the two doom wheels. But other than that, I mean, his combat is not good enough to deal with anointed resilience five and three up armor save. My range damage is fo focused on the disciples, obviously, that can be very annoying in CC and dread mills that are also key. As you can see, that's dread mill. I need to deal with them because they can be annoying if they start shooting at my great bull, chariot. I have a lot of juicy target. Tra uh, the our friends, the Torque Anointed as well, so yeah. If possible, I would like to drop for first turn to be aggressive, do some magic damage on the Disciples and Doom Wheel, claim some early board control, push, put him under pressure, I think that would be really helpful. And the matchups overall seems positive. I expect rather defensive deployment from, from my opponent. Let's go for deployment. He was able to choose the side. He went uh, top right corner, which is obvious because it's giving me the house. I would have done the same if I was him and also if I was me with this list choosing the side. And I was able to drop everything for first turn. So I did, decided to do the following. I analyzed his zone and as you can see, he has a good hill with a wall. So it's it's pretty good corner to defend. Uh, obviously it's not easy for him to claim the wall but at the same time using the hill might be good to hit to hide behind then go over shoot he can do some stuff so yeah I was like I would prefer obviously I, I, I expect him to be s somehow around this hill so that's why I put a lot of strengths I put my double chariot here the tank and the bull Obviously that can move, that can use the forest as cover against the doom wheel. So I thought, I expected the doom wheel to be around the hill. So that's why I, I, I thought I can move forward tank, put the bull behind and they can go in the forest. So that was okay for me. And if there is any disciples around, I can cast magic. And also him is creating a huge zone of 26, huge, not that huge, but there's a zone of danger of 26 where he can shoot with the flamethrower. So yeah, we have the tank, a BSB within the anointed, three anointed pearl weapon, vassal, vassal, ziggurat in the back. And he decided to put the lord into the vermin guard. Here you have the mid grinder and one machinist, second machinist is here. Doom wheel, doom wheel, gutter, gutter, 
one block of Brotherhood with two mage, second block of Brotherhood, disciples, disciples. My turn one, obviously I push forward, so I turn around uh, my tank and push 10. I place myself here as an interesting position because obviously he can shoot at me with the Doom Wheel, but at the same time this one will be long and this time could be short, but if he does that I will obviously get charges with these three models against the Doom Wheel. So basically it's giving him a chance to possibly kill the bull, Obviously it's not that easy because I have resilience 6 and I have a 5 up ward save so it might be not that easy for him to, to kill me. I think on average should do between 2 and 4 wounds probably, most likely. And I position my chariot to be within cover and able to charge. So I thought that was pretty interesting. For me it was not worth it for him to move and try to shoot at the bull but we'll see what he does. I could have done maybe slightly better with the tank, obviously it's not easy because you need to turn and then move forward, but I could have done maybe slightly better to protect better my flank. And I wanted to be aggressive with the bull to be in range to cast spell at him and also to cast within 18 the toxic breath against them. So that was the idea. And here I push forward just giving some charge possibilities on the two models that can take charges, unbreakable and bodyguard, the rest just, just move into position. In the magic phase. I cast a Mark for Doom on the wheel, I do a good roll and my opponent let that, so I'm able to do 3 wounds to the Doom wheel, which is really good, then I do Pentagram of Pain also on the Doom wheel, trying to finish that off, my opponent dispels it, and then I have 3 dice left, with 3 dice I try to do a 2d6 strength 4 against them, but I fail, uh, unfortunately for me, not able to get the 7 with 3 dice, and then I get 1 dice back, I try on the far up a fireball on them as well, but not able to get that. No shooting since I march with the tank, he's turn 1. To my surprise, he takes the bait, try to shoot at my um, bull, so he goes forward, short range, long range, uh, move also forward with the disciples to create some, yeah, some traffic, force me to charge him or to get charged, and here it chaffed me, I think it was not worth it because the only possibly interesting charge is onto the flank of disciples, but at the same time then I will be in the middle of the board. Uh, generating some traffic jam for them, so not that helpful. And here, I mean, it's a very long charge in the front, so it's not scared. So I wouldn't have charged yet with them. I think it's too early, definitely. In the magic phase, um, he does a, he does a hand of heaven onto my uh, anointed star. I let that off because he rolled a 5, 5 and 6 and it does nothing to me, luckily for me. Then he rolled Twisted Effigy onto the tank, don't care that much because I have two juicy charges for the next turn. And then he does try of Face, I dispel it. The Doom Wheel shoot at my uh, bull, this one did nothing with Strength 5 and this one did 2 wounds in total. I think I was able to do 3 hits. Or 2 hits, 2 wounds, and then I did no ward save and he rolled double 1 or 1 and 2, so did only uh, 2 wounds to me, so I could have died, obviously, would have been a bit unlucky, but I could have died, I knew the risk, but I knew if he did that, that I will be able the next turn to, to charge both wheels, so I was fine with this risk, um, but like I said, I could have done slightly better and get some cover at least against one doom wheel, I think that was feasible. My turn 2, I get some charges, the tank with a 7 on 2 dice, charge onto the doom wheel. I could have charged on them in the corner just to generate damage and then overrun onto the doom wheel, but I like the fact that here I'm out of arc of them and then I can overrun, still out of arc, and if I get like a 10 or a 9, I can get onto the flank, which is really juicy. So I thought, let's try it. I roll the 7, here I charge, here I charge, here I charge the chaff. And to my surprise, he decided to flee, so I was able to easily catch him, pass my leadership and reform onto the flank, which is really nice. And here I decided to chaff, yeah, just to avoid Vermingard charging anything like them, or I don't know what. I wanted to to make sure the Vermingard with the Lord, I can wait a little bit more and ensure that I can get the charge. Because it's always the same story, they are not that scary if they charge my anointed boss, for example. But, I mean, if he charge, he can get the buffs and you never know what happened then after magic. So I prefer to charge, get some impact hits and get me get the buff. And yeah, position the bull who took two wounds slightly more defensive to, yeah, be quite far away from magic, but still within 12 to give the ward save on them and give the buff where I need to. In the magic phase, I try the pentagram of pain to heal myself against disciples, he dispels it, then I'm able to get uh, the ward save on them, which is really nice, and then I try to put uh, 
toxic breath on myself, I failed and I was able to get an hereditary and I decided to put on this one. My thought process was, here hereditary doesn't help, here it might help because I could hit with my 3 attack on 3+, plus instead of 4+, plus. might just help me to kill him and then be able to overrun, I like that. And here I thought that should be easy to finish, I mean I have 2d3 plus 2 strength 5 ap2, then I have 6 attack, battle focus, 4 plus 4 plus ap1, 9 attack, 3 plus 5 up ap2, and then 2d3 plus 1 strength 4 ap0, uh, so should be enough. And what I liked about this charge as well, he didn't position himself perfectly so he was not seeing me. Which is really bad for him because I could just take the charge, then reform, look at them, I should be fine, they're only strength 3. So I really like my opportunities. For me, that was already like a game-changing turn because I was able to get that charge off, especially. This one was pretty easy. I only got one DT in the process, which was okay. But here, I mean, his chaff, I have all everything in position, so I'm feeling okay. Uh, close combat. So I start with that one. I roll very good on the impact. I one-shot him. Overrun, we're only on six, but uh, yeah, I'm still out of arc of the big block, so I'm fine. So really nice, then I roll that one I guess, and I fluff completely. With all the attack I told you I do zero wound, and here you see I should have put hereditary here, because with hereditary, Canim Beast hit on 3+, plus, I reroll to wound, reroll to wound the incendiary, all the flaming attacks, so pff, I could have ensured this combat goes much better. So I fluff, I do nothing, I have a charge, and he does 3 wounds, he kills my prophet. I lose by 2, I flee. I roll like a 10, 11, it doesn't catch me, but still I bounced, and pff, this is unexpected. And here I'm able to deal with them, he kill like one, I know it didn't return with all toxic, all the attack, but I still have a 3 up 5 up, which is really solid with toughness 5. His turn 2, uh, it takes a combo charge against the anointed, but it's not able to get the 7 on them, and only fail charge a 3. I was okay with, uh, so I was able, when I saw the fiasco here, I was able to reform the BSB because I did this combat after. So I was able to get the BSB here to be able to strike at Doomwheel, I should be fine. I was not too worried about Doomwheel in the flank because I have all my attacks that can strike and I have the ward save, so I should be okay. And him going in the face, phew, yeah, obviously it was slightly annoying, but should have been fine as well, I mean I can put a lot of attack on them, do a lot of damage and I still have stuff that can pin down this unit, so I should be okay. I rally this guy, uh, no sorry, <laughs> we're still in this turn, I fled, they had to take frenzy check because of the failing chariot here, so he charged me, I fled, passes the panic here, a 9 rollable and I flee over here, he failed charge. He decided to charge the tank to pin me down and here charge the chaff, obviously. Magic face, I binding scroll the wheel turn because I need the tank to hold. If you see the situation of the board, obviously the anointed will go for it against this unit or this one, but I will go for it. So I cannot afford to turn around because I might kill the doom wheel and then get a free pivot. But even with that, I don't want to charge into the, that one to do, the, to do what, you know? The tank need to hold and I need to be able to get both anointed into the Vermin Guard, actually. I think that's something that might be decisive for the game, so that's what I should do. So the tank will be on his own at least two turns because I need one turn to move the bull and then turn after I can charge. So it's a lot of round of combat. That's why I couldn't afford to take the wheel turn. So I binding scroll the wheel turn and end of even against my tree anointed on the left. I dispel that, didn't want to take the panic check. And then he does hereditary but failed to cast and then gets the trial of face that does two wound to me. I'm able to pass the panic check. So that was okay. Close combat, um, I did three wounds to him only. He did two wounds to me. Uh, so I lose but I'm unbreakable. I pass my reform but he reformed first and make sure I cannot reform because he puts a lot of model on the line. So that's well done for him. Uh, this close combat, I killed the Doom Wheel. He did nothing to me, I guess. And this one, he kills everybody except the champion. Champion strike back, put an incendiary token, which was really nice. And then I flee, he reforms. My turn three. I combo charge um, everybody into the Vermin Guard, so they, you, you must imagine this flying guy, uh, fleeing guy, he was over there. So I, not, I had to turn around with them and clip the corner with them, they were able to connect on the 7 on the charge, which was nice to get, just to make sure he can flee. Um, and here we still in combat, move the 
the bull up to be able to spot because this is where the battle is about here. I mean, I, I still have time, so I was able to rally the chariot, uh, activate relentless, chaff them, generate frenzy bait, and then make sure I get some counter charges. So for me, that was uh, totally okay. I have some time to deal with them. That's not my priority. I need to focus myself on here because, I mean, that's that's where I should be winning the battle. Um. I try to put hereditary on them, boosted obviously to put him uh, down to weapon skill one, and then he would hit me on fives, and I would hit on two plus, which would be amazing. But he dispelled that. I'm able to get the ward save on them to help, um, and that's it. In close combat, I had a low card magic, unfortunately, because I had a lot of things to do. So the tank does another three wounds. He does one wound to me. It's a push. I cannot reform because I cannot. Uh, I need to keep as many model engaged as before, and this one is an auto break. I pursue, and here I think we did a mistake because we checked the flank before making the pivot, and I think they. Sh so that's why I I engage to the flank and I just engage clip the corner. But I think I need to do first the 90 degree pivot because I make him flee this direction, and then connect to the front. If you can confirm me in the commentary, that would be really nice. I think here we made a mistake. And here you see as well, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have taken the charge with them because for me, the situation here is perfect. I checked before, he cannot close the door. So he cannot counter charge with them and they cannot counter charge anything because there is no way to clip here or clip here. So they have no counter charge. So for me, situation actually is really good. And I think that's why I should have only charged with both anointed because I can stay another turn. Most likely it will be steadfast this turn. So I stay another turn and then on the next turn I most likely break the steadfast and then I can get the free pivot on his turn and charge on my turn which is a much 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 better. So yeah although this charge was looking really juicy because you're like oh cool I can break the steadfast then I can pursue this direction reform them everything looks perfect but that was not the optimal optimal solution. His turn three. So that's how we resolve the charge, but I think looking at it, I think the pivot is before, then I'm in the front, and I charge like that, I think. If you can just confirm me that, because I'm not sure about it. So it counter charge me in the flank with the Plague Monks to my age in combat, which is pretty juicy. He counter charge with the gutter as well, some poison attack here, I'm not so happy. A failed frenzy, charge me, and that was it. In the magic phase, uh, in the magic phase, he tried to put the wheel turn on the tank, I dispelled that obviously, and then he gets the reroll to wound on to my two remaining anointed, and is able with two dice, despite my uh, obsidian rock, to get the boosted twisted effigy on the bull, which is annoying because it will get, be much harder to cast, and that's my only caster al alive, obviously. Uh, close combat, my vassal levy on the right break, he chased me, and roll, uh, he tried not to chase, fail, because of the frenzy, uh, three dice maximize, and then gets a huge roll and goes out of arc. So I think here I could have done a better reform just to make sure I can charge in the flank if he failed to, to catch me. Yeah, that was a bit stupid with that, but yeah, not so important, to be honest. Uh, the tank this time gets three wounds in the face. The gutter are good with the poison and stuff. So I get three wounds, I have only one wound left. I do three wounds in return, um, unbreakable, so I'm still here. Anointed, he kills these guys, um, I do a couple of wounds, it's a draw, I guess, yeah, oh, oh, he needs to, no, actually he needed to take a steadfast because I had the charge, a flank, a banner, all that stuff, and I did some wounds, uh, two wounds to the mage, and some wounds to both units, some stomps and stuff, so I was still winning, he had to take here uh, eight rollable, he was out of combat, and since he killed me, he didn't bring the flank, big flank charge and stuff, so that was also huge. Uh, so he's free and then he overruns before anybody can reform. I think that's how it's resolved, so he charged me in the flank. My turn 4. Um, because of the new position of the monk, I cannot counter charge them with them, which is annoying because of the... Yeah, I wasn't able to get be better position on the last turn because of the attribute. And here obviously the bull came to help. Uh, chariot move before the fleeing guy just to set up a good trap uh, basically you will need to take a frenzy if he fails he can charge me i can flee over be out of the range then he takes some dts which is always nice here i was able to get my uh, leadership check just march toward the 
breakthrough zone just to ensure I get the scenario, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. In the magic phase, I'm able to get the ward save again on them, which is really, really nice because they are so tough in combat. So if you give them a ward save, I mean, they are almost unbeatable. And then I try to put hereditary pentagram by opponent dispel that. Close combat here, it's a push. I did five wounds, it did nothing to me. And I cannot reform because I'm in his flank, he's in my flank. So it's a bit strange, but I cannot reform. And he could have faced me, but he didn't want to, to avoid me getting too much attack. Um, and I did probably kill the mage this time. I think I put some attack onto the guy, and on this guy I put two wounds. I was not able to kill the, this guy, but I was able to put two wounds on, on him at, at least. And here, I think he made a mistake. He didn't challenge with the machinist, which was probably a mistake because the bull went avoc and kill everybody <laughs> with the help of the tank uh, so i was able to pass i think two another two armor save and survive with the tank and in return i was able to kill everybody with the stomp the breast weapon all the attacks so he should have taken the just the the um, challenge with the machinist to avoid me killing so many models everybody actually and yeah i pursued with the tank out of the board against the gutter they were dead i reformed with the bull so this situation this time he decided to reform with his big block he's turn four i charge a lot of dt's a lot of dead i flee uh, in the magic phase what did he do the wheel turn yeah he was able to get a wheel turn and reroll to wound he's too buff i tried to dispel one of those with all my dice but i wasn't able to get that so he's full buff but we know i mean if I'm able to get the bodyguard 9 rollable, then I get counter charge, counter charge. That's the end of the game, basically. So, yeah, <coughs> he will um, not do much, not do much at all. I will kill some of his, uh, I will kill the mage. This time he has no mage anymore. And then my turn, I counter charge. So I was able to get the 9 rollable. I think I needed to test. And then I double counter charge, uh, tanks back on the board, rally the chariot, continue to march. And then in close combat, I'm able to break, I pursue with balls, catch him here, he flee, I don't, don't catch, but he ended up like here. And he decided to concede because that was the end of the game. I mean, there's nothing, just them left on the board. I still have one magic phase to kill them, force some other DT, maybe even charge, I have a lot of options. Yeah. Uh, so that's how it ended up. He took the half of my BSB because he decided that was smart. Because he knew that the fact that I was bodyguard was problematic, so he put all his attack on the BSB each turn. And even with my 2-up armor save and him being AP0, he was able to sneak 3 wounds. So he took half of the BSB, both Vasal block that chaffed, the 3 anointed, the Luga Prophet, and half of the tank. And I took the scenario, which is 20. Some analysis on the game. Yeah, it was a positive matchup. Going forward, just gave him no chance for the scenario, I think. And my deployment encouraged him somehow to not take the base part of his deployment zone. That's why he didn't want, he didn't went for the hill. I guess he was just, yeah, a bit scared maybe of facing tank, bull, double chariot. That was maybe a bit too much. And he took a zone that was very good for me because I could go around and threaten from the flank as well. Because I had a unit on the left in the space where I couldn't deploy anything. And yeah, confirmation of what I told you at the beginning. The big unit of anointed, not damaged before combat, were just too strong for the VS. That's impossible. I mean, with strength 4 or strength 3, you have no chance to, to deal with these guys. Some mistakes on my part should have secured the combat of the chariot with the H. Uh, the bull trap worked well, but I could have used some cover to be slightly safer. Obviously, it turned it out to be very good to just bait the wheel to shoot at me, but I should have been able to get at least some cover and do something slightly better. Better not to charge with the warrior, definitely, uh, likely he would have been steadfast, I could have reformed on his turn and this post-combat pivot on his turn are so good in the ninth age, so I should have been able to do better. In this case, it was just juicy to break the steadfast, but thinking about it, my position was so good, I he had no counter charge, so I should have been able to profit from that. Regarding the lists, really convinced by the core setup and by the list, I mean everything can fight. 
Um, obviously, yeah, my opponent misjudged the match. He didn't have a lot of experience, he's, uh, especially against ID. So I think he misjudged the match. We discussed about it afterwards and he was happy, I think, to, to learn some lessons from this game. And he didn't take the best approach. Um, if, I were, if I were him, I would probably have dropped uh, more defensively on the right part of the board. Uh, in the corner, use the hill to hide a little bit and just make things much more difficult. I think, to be honest, he has no chance whatsoever to get the scenario. Especially with me starting and stuff. So, I think, pff, why try to defend all the zone if you are not going to win the scenario? Just defend properly and try to, to do what you can because it's a difficult match. And I think his spell selection was not optimal. Should have taken the 2d6 random movement, I think, in the Witchcraft. That's a really good spell because it's like a chaff. It's a free chaff. I mean, you're casting that in some situation, the opponent cannot charge. It's it's really, really good. So I think I was I was really happy when he didn't take it, but I think it's a spell that's really worth it. Despite the small range, it's not so easy to cast. Uh, definitely, if you are in a bunker in the back, that's hard to cast. But, I mean, if he did his death star properly, you can put mid grinder, machinist in front, and then you have your caster in the second rank, and then you can just be in range to cast it. So, that's possible. And Smite the Unbeliever would have been good in the tome as well. So, that's it, guy. A, a bit special battle report because I did some list analysis and stuff, an explanation of my list and all that. But um, I hope you, you liked it. It's a bit long video. Sorry for that. And I will try to do something more normal in the upcoming videos. But that was the best way for me to tackle all of that. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you liked it. And yeah, see you soon. Bye bye.